Hi everyone and welcome. I'm here in my kitchen and I'm about to go down into the wormery to give the worms some food. It's my red wigglers that are due for a feeding. It's been eight days since they last got food. And I have here an assortment of frozen different veggies. A large portion of it is um, potato peels. There's also other stuff in here, little scraps of apple and other things, but it's a large number of potato peels. And the topic came up over the past few days in the um, discussions about one of my previous videos where I was feeding potato peels about the idea of not only doing what I do here which is to have had it in the freezer for a while and then allowing for the um, the process of it thawing out to um, you know maybe soften it up and make it easier for the worms to eat but there was this idea of um, giving it a little bit of time in the heat as well and cooking it so i had originally taught thought about you know boiling the stuff for a while which would you know require some time to drain it off and let it dry but then the um the really good idea also came up in the conversations about steaming it which would pretty much do the same thing which is expose all this stuff to some really high heat but not soak it and um and that's when it occurred to me that in the in the kitchen Amongst my pots and pans, I've also got one of these nifty little gadgets, which um, just kind of folds up into this little tiny thing. So if you've got one of these in your kitchen too, and you don't know what it is, <laughs> um, basically it you know it opens up like this and it adapts to pretty much any size pot, and it's got these little legs on it too, so that it can um, stand off from the bottom of the the pot. You just put a little bit of moisture, a little bit of water down in the bottom, and then all the moisture will come up through these holes, all the steam, close up the uh, container with a lid, and uh, the stuff that you've got in there will get steamed. And I don't think it would take a whole lot of time. I mean, I know this stuff in here is frozen, but my thought was just to throw this stuff into here, put a little bit of water under it, cover it, let it steam for a few minutes, probably not too long, maybe let it go 10 minutes or so. Maybe in the meantime, I'll grab myself a refill on my coffee. And then, um, yeah, and then come come on back in here and grab this stuff and then take it down to the wormery and give it to the worms. I mean, I'll wait until it's cooled off a little bit. I don't want to give them a bunch of steaming hot food. But I thought that it might actually help, uh, it help with the breakdown process, you know, between freezing it and then maybe even by steaming it. Um, maybe we'll uh, accelerate the pace at which the stuff can get broken down by the worms. So I was going to take care of this, but the next time we um, we come back together, I will have already finished this, and we'll be down in the wormery to give this stuff to the worms. So let me get to work on this, and then we'll regroup in a few minutes downstairs with the worms. So the food is boiling right now, but it should be done pretty soon. I came down here in the meantime, I bought down the coffee we're going to be feeding them as well. And I also took a bunch of these old coffee filters, and I haven't really been treating the new coffee filters from the new coffee machine the same as I have in the past. I just grabbed a bunch of them. They've already had the coffee removed from them, but they were all dry at this point, and I just tore them all up into little shreds. So this is the stuff we're going to use as bedding to go along with the feeding today. So uh, I'm gonna go grab the food now and bring that down here too and we'll be ready to go. We can feed our bins. All right, so fast forward about 30 minutes. <laughs> I went upstairs and I had left the stove all the way on a high level. Thought it would you know, speed up the evaporation of the moisture that I had thrown in there. I put a little tiny bit of water underneath that strainer steamer thing and then when I came down here and I was tearing up the um, the coffee filters and prepping things for shooting the video by the time I got upstairs you could smell the char the stink it's like any sort of like sugars and you know <clears throat> juices that were flowing out of these things as they were steaming were dropping to the bottom of the pan and all the moisture all the water that had been there had already been transformed into steam and all this stuff just ended up getting charred onto the bottom of the pot. So I've been spending the past 30 minutes or so trying to get all that charred, cooked stuff off the bottom of the pot and uh, whatever. I mean, 
This stuff has a little bit of a char smell to it, but it's definitely soft. I don't know, whatever. I wouldn't eat it. It doesn't smell too good, but hopefully the worms will like it. It's definitely soft. Probably a lot softer than it was if it, you know, if I had not cooked it or steamed it or whatever. But whatever, we're going to give it to the worms. Hopefully they like it. <laughs> I just figured I'd do some full disclosure on what it is that happened upstairs in the kitchen after we left there. Oh well. I gotta pay closer attention. Now right, let's get to work. Okay. We're beginning with the youngest of my bins, which is really just a few weeks old at this point. And we, uh, we were actually in this bin the other day, recruiting worms for a special project. So while I believe that the original estimate of worms in this container was um, fairly high, I think it was close to 3,000. 2,800, I believe, is the number that comes to mind. I, um, I did do a withdrawal. <laughs> so I think the balance of worms in here has actually been reduced a little bit now to... Uh, I'm not even sure at this point. Maybe 2,000. Um, it's hard to say. The, um, the worms are definitely digging this space between the plastic and the paper. I've been trying to do this lately because the worms obviously like it. This little tiny, tiny baby worm right there. So small. And this little guy is so dark in color. Most of them are pretty active, though, trying to take cover from the bright lights overhead. Given enough time, I'm sure they would just all squirm away out of view. Sometimes I'll just kind of give them a break and take them out of the bright light by simply folding the paper in half like that. And then we can just check the bottom also to make sure we're not taking any for a ride. Let's get them off here. And hopefully they'll be content with the fact that the paper has given them a little bit of shelter from the bright light. So let's just try moving them aside this way. The worms were extracted from where the last feeding had occurred, which was eight days ago at this point. And then what went in the place of that was a whole bunch of kind of uh, bedding and um, leftover food type stuff. And there was a bunch of worms in there too. So I, um, I, I sort of treated it as a feeding because all that stuff that went in here, I knew had a bunch of... Um, food type materials and bedding type materials in here so I, I did treat it as sort of a small feeding not a very big feeding but since it did seem to me like this bin did get some food items scattered into here you know, just a couple days ago I didn't think we would have to go too overboard on feeding this bin today but I figured as long as I'm feeding my red wigglers I would also check in on this bin too just to um, give it a little bit of food and then um, in my tracking system, I know that I've pretty much fed all of my red wigglers today. There's a lot of worms in here. Sometimes I question my um, estimation of worm populations. Because you just have to look in here and, you know, right away, you would have to almost, I don't know, just, just from what we're seeing here on the, on the surface, we're seeing tons and tons of worms. And if there's a, if there's like maybe 2,000 worms in here, if that's my estimate or, you know, thereabouts, then, then that's kind of cool. But sometimes I wonder if there's actually more. Yeah. Let's see if we can move them aside temporarily so we could drop in a little bit of fresh bedding, a little bit of fresh food. And maybe at the same time also get a sense of how many worms we actually still have remaining remaining in here. I think I took about a pound of worms out of here the other day, which would equate to about a thousand worms or or thereabouts. But then it felt like I was putting some back too. So I was taking the um the bedding and uh, leftover food and stuff that was in the horizontal um, migration feeding zone of my now retired oldest red wiggler bin. Man, that's a mouthful. I don't even know if that makes sense. But if you've been following my channel, you might know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not going to bother trying to explain it. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of in that 2,200 worms guesstimate in terms of how many worms are in here. And um, 
And that might be about right. It might be a little bit shy. It does seem like we got a good number of worms in here. So let's see. Um, here's some of that coffee filter material that I ripped to shreds earlier. This bin definitely has lots and lots of uh, bedding material all over the place. But either way, I always like to put a little something under the food. Because as the food starts to emit moisture and it starts getting broken down by the worms and consumed by the worms, I always think that it's nice to have something that could soak up some of the juices and fluids that come out of the food. And a little bit of bedding right beneath the food seems like the right approach to take. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> we just ejected more than half of the coffee that was in my little storage box here. Let's save a little bit for the other two bins that we're feeding here today. Okay, this is, I, I think I do actually, um, according to my record keeping at least, I do estimate that this bin probably has um, somewhere in the neighborhood of twice as many worms as the other two red wiggler bins that we're going to tend to today. So to, um, to be uh, generous on the feeding is probably a good idea in this bin. So I shouldn't sweat it. But we'll see. We'll get a chance to check the other two Red Wiggler bins to see how they're looking. And maybe we can also get an estimate of, you know, how their populations stack up against this bin's population as far as the sheer numbers are concerned. Gonna take a peek over here on the side too. I still smell that stinky char smell now that we scooped some food out of that that bag over here next to me. Um, there's a peach pit. I wonder how long that's gonna take. I should stick it over here in the middle where the food is. So yeah, this is a nice um nice busy bin. The moisture level, I don't know, the stuff is really crumbly, although it feels kind of damp and comfortable and there's plenty of worms there too which would make you think that the moisture levels okay just that when the stuff really crumbles readily like that it makes me wonder what is another peach pit something very very tough hard oh this is probably the inside of a, a mango seed this might actually be the seed of what's inside of a mango I don't know it's hard to say it broke apart pretty easily in my hands there this is kind of a cool bin. I think we're going to have fun tracking the progress of this bin because it's got so many worms in it. I've actually thought about maybe actually splitting the population of this bin to get another Red Wiggler bin loaded up and started. I don't know. We'll see. For now, I think we're in good shape here. We've got this bin fed. It's got a nice uh, kind of char odor to it now. <laughs> Although it might just be the, the food that I've got here in this container that I'm smelling. It might not be the, the bin itself. But I think you would agree, you know, just from working our way through here and checking out the moisture everywhere, nothing seemed too muddy. Everything seemed pretty flaky and crumbly, which is the way I'd like it to be. So I think from a moisture perspective, we're in good shape. Sometimes if things do start to appear as if they're getting a little bit too overly damp and muddy, I'll, oops, I'll, um, I'll skip putting the plastic coverings back on, give the bin a little bit of a chance to air out and ventilate, maybe shed some of its moisture through evaporation. But I think for, uh, for a fairly new bin, this one's chugging along pretty nicely at this point. So let's move on to the second oldest Red Wiggler bin. This is a, uh, a slightly smaller sized tub than the one we just tended to. I've got more of these size containers and they're, they're a nice size. They're about the same depth, but they're just a little bit more narrow. So I feel like I could fit more of them on my shelf. And the, the area or the volume basically I don't think is um, that much different. Here we've got more worms enjoying the moisture out here on the top surface of the paper maybe in this case we'll just try to evict these little guys before we remove the paper 
check the bottom of it though, make sure we're not taking any for a ride that way. I suppose there's always that chance that between the two leaves of paper there's a worm or two hanging out. I think we've got the majority of them removed. Here's something um, we might want to replace at this point. I've been trying to mark where we feed. Same way we had that cardboard across the, um, the feeding area in the last bin that we tended to. Here we've got what remains of a uh, coffee filter, <laughs> which was trying to indicate to us where the last feeding had occurred, but I got a feeling I'm just gonna use that as bedding at this point. I can just grab a nice fresh feeding zone indicator for after we're done. The material in here is a little bit more mature looking than the last bin that we tended to. I did use a lot of um, large leaves, a lot of autumn leaves came in here not long ago almost as decoration, kind of celebrating the autumn leaves and colors. But more recently I've been trying to get all these leaves down into the feeding area to let them become more worm food rather than bedding or top cover. So I think we'll probably find a good number of them still not yet broken down as we make our way down to where we fed last. So I'm pretty sure I was taking a lot of those leaves and sinking them down to become the bedding to go beneath the food I was adding. And hopefully, you know, they'll also get treated as food and get consumed by the worms in time. So yeah, there's large leaves still hanging out down here. But amongst the leaves, I'm not seeing really, um, I don't see any signs of the food that they received eight days ago. The food, that, the food was pretty um, fine, small particles of leafy stuff that I would assume gets um, consumed pretty easily by the worms. So I didn't really expect after eight days to find many or any um, lingering leftovers. So let's open up a little spot to give these guys their next feeding. And... Um, We'll return all this leafy stuff we scooped out back down into the feeding area before we drop in the fresh food. But let's uh, begin with a handful of some of this shredded paper that we bought down here to give them. Then we can throw in a little bit of this. I think this stuff will eventually break down pretty nicely, I hope. It's these um, the sticks that I know are going to take a while longer. It's the main reason I want them down in there where the action is. Now let's see if we can give them some but not too much because we want to save some for the oldest red wiggler bin. Make sure we give each bin a fair shake. Almost feeling like we gave the uh, the first bin a fairly skimpy portion. This does seem to me almost like we've given we've given this bin a little bit more. That's okay. Not that big a difference. They got tons of coffee. They got pretty much half of the coffee I bought down here, so it's definitely more than what the other bins are gonna get, at least as far as coffee coffee portions are concerned. Okay. Oh yeah. Duh. Here I am talking about the coffee and almost forgetting to add it. <laughs> Let's get the coffee in here. All right. Now that I'm actually applying the coffee, I can see that we didn't really, I did end up putting some of it right back into the box, so we didn't really give too much either way. I think it is gonna be a good equitable, fair um, splitting up of the coffee supply for these worms. Yeah, tomatoes, right? Yeah, I think that was part of the feeding last time. I had some frozen tomatoes that I had cut in half, and they um, they really seem to have gone to town on these. I guess with it being basically, you know, probably almost all moisture, all liquid, they probably really enjoyed chowing down on those tomatoes. It's always kind of cool finding all kinds of worms hanging out on the far edges of my bins. And I guess for me it's cool, maybe for other people it's pretty commonplace, but for me it's cool because I'd always, up until 
maybe a year ago. Up until then, I had always really found the edges of the outer edges of my bins, the corners and the uh, outer edges to be really dry. And as a result of it being kind of dry, no worms wanted to hang out there. So on the outer edges, I would always, you know, find a fairly barren space, kind of free of worms. And nowadays, with the plastic coverings I've been using to maintain good, you know, even moisture throughout the bin, I feel like I've got um, worms pretty much in all parts of the bin doing their work. And I'm sure that's, you know, going to increase the efficiency of the bin a lot, too. Can't remember, did we inspect this side? If we did, we'll check it again. Just from the feeling of it, it doesn't seem like we did. It feels a little bit kind of dense. So I think by just doing this, we air it out a little bit. We create little passages for the worms to be able to move through. We inject a little bit of air so that the microbes within the material can also do their work and make the food um, that's in the bin nice and broken down for the worms to eat. All right, yeah, things look pretty nice in here. Sometimes at this point, I'll try to scatter some sort of a bedding material across the top of the bin a little bit. Just, um, just because the worms probably like it. And I do have some other paper. Yeah, you know, I've got this bag of shredded paper. Why don't we give them a little bit more bedding material across the top? There we go. Just grab the nice generous handful of stuff. Sometimes I worry about putting in this much dry material and the, and the uh, worry that it's going to kind of sop up some of the moisture in the bin, but I think the moisture levels in this bin are pretty decent. The, uh, the last bin that we just checked, on, checked in on, the stuff seemed a little bit more crumbly, a little bit more dry. So I'm thinking that uh, this paper will probably help sop up a little bit of the moisture and um, dry things out a little bit, but that's okay because the moisture level in this bin seems a little bit higher than the last one we checked in on. Not to say that it's excessively damp, but it does seem like it could stand to give up a little bit of the moisture within the bin to try to hydrate some of this dry material here. And I'm sure the worms are going to appreciate that too, so we'll see how that progresses in a week, another week's time or so when we get back in here. And we'll just cover up again with our traditional newspaper covering. I do this a lot because I do like having that little welcoming party of the worms hanging out there right beneath the plastic when I come in the next time. <laughs> so that's always fun to see. And these large plastic bags they're, they do such a nice job, too, going right out to the, the edges of the bin, all the way around, helping to keep almost all the moisture right there within the bedding, allowing for very little of it to escape, if any. All right, we've got one more to feed. Let's go take care of it. Okay. So it was, uh, it was just a few days ago that I finally bought closure to my uh, oldest red wiggler bin. Migrated the worms out of there and uh, harvested the castings, making this bin, which is, I believe, 96 days of age as of today, the oldest of my red wiggler bins. And um, there's a little bit of moisture up here on top, but we've not yet noticed any worms hanging out here. This paper looks pretty fresh. I'm trying to remember now, I think we may have just recently added this paper to this bin. Um, I would have to ref refresh my memory and look at the video from not too long ago, but I do believe that this bin, I don't know, I can't remember why this was added to here. Maybe the idea was that this piece of paper being added in dry would help uh, absorb a little bit of the moisture within the bin. Uh, I can't remember why it was added. And here too we've got another coffee filter that was attempting to serve that same purpose. Um, as we saw in the other bin, just marking where we fed. And you can tell right away, the material in this bin is a lot more mature. There's obviously little scraps of bedding and um, bits of leaves here and there, but not nearly as many as we saw in the, uh, the other younger bins. And right away, we can also see traces of the pretty autumn leaves that I bought in here <laughs> not, not too long ago to use them as bedding. Um, 
but I'm not going to be adding any sort of bedding type materials such as leaves any longer to a bin of this age. At 96 days of age, I, um, I am going to probably be looking to start steering this bin towards um, completion soon. The average, I've got my spreadsheet that um, tracks how long each bin took to get from start to finish. And I've had bins that took, you know, hundreds of days to get finished, dozens of feedings. And I've had other bins that I've really, you know, um, bought to completion in much shorter periods of time. So there's um, certainly no standard. You just run it as long as you want. A lot of times it's just the capacity of the bin that um, ends up being the the reason you stop because you know that you're just going to run out of space so you want to maybe uh, start driving your bin towards harvest because of the fact that you've simply run out of space. Other times you're motivated because it's um, approaching planting season and you want the compost so you want to bring closure to your bin because of the fact that you want the castings out of there. So whatever your motivation um, you know, you follow your you follow your instincts and your needs to tell you when it's time to drive a, a bin towards completion. But since I have no particular agenda of any sort, uh, I can kind of just use my mean average uh, bin age as sort of a telltale as to whether I want to maybe consider taking that action with one of my bins. And since we're coming up on almost 100 days with this bin, and since I believe that the average age of the bins in my wormery are somewhere around 150 days, I believe the calculated average of all my completed bins um, over the years is 153 days of age. Uh, it kind of makes sense that maybe within another feeding or two we would want to... Um, potentially start transitioning this bin to its next phase of its uh, life. So we would kind of um, stop feeding it and take it out of composting feeding mode. And then, um, and then an intermediate step that I've been using lately prior to trying to focus on depopulating the castings of the worms is a uh, kind of a starving phase or a foraging phase, which gives the worms a chance to focus their attention on all the little scraps of bedding and food that still linger within the bin, uh, rather than giving them fresh food, and uh, that's been working pretty good. So I'm not really at that point yet today, they're definitely going to get a feeding. But I always wonder if, you know, maybe at some point I'm going to decide that that was the last feeding that they receive. I believe today's be feeding of this bin is going to be the 12th feeding overall. It's a little chunk of onion. It's got some pretty pungent odor to it. And I wonder sometimes if the only reason sometimes onions are considered as a no-no in the worm bin is simply because of the stinky smell that it creates. Because <laughs> normally a worm bin has pretty much no, no odor whatsoever. But I guess if you use certain materials in your bin as food then maybe uh, maybe you will start to notice a little bit of a stink um, yeah definitely a, a pretty high moisture content in this bin and it makes me wonder if it might be time to start leaving off the plastic covering you might have noticed in the case of this bin, the plastic covering was not just a sheet of plastic. The plastic was actually wrapped around the cardboard that covers the entire bin. So if I wanted to eliminate using the, uh, the plastic covering, then the cardboard top would also go with it. And since it is pretty damp in here, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I think we'll cover up at the end with the newspaper that was resting right on top of the the worm bed but we're not going to put on that cardboard top that has the plastic covering on it I think that'll give this bit a chance to air out a little bit maybe lose some of this moisture which to me seems a bit excessive it certainly doesn't need to be this damp inside of your worm bin even though I'm sure the worms really like it if I do want to have a chance at 
eventually harvesting this bin, I would probably want the material to be a little bit drier than this. And I'm in no hurry. So over the next few weeks, I think if we simply allow the bin to uh, lose some of its moisture by having only a piece of paper covering the top, then it'll, uh, it'll start looking a lot nicer pretty soon. All right, um, I've got a little bit of this shredded up coffee filter, which um, will also suck up a little bit of moisture by being placed in here dry. Not much though. And, um, and then maybe before we add the fresh food, we can dump in all of this material that we pulled out of the feeding area. Try to keep it down low so that it maintains, um, you know, getting the attention that it gets by being down there along with the fresh food. Let's see if we can empty this bag out. All this stuff is a little bit sticky, but you know, it seems like it came out of the bag pretty easily. I thought it was going to stick to the bag and not want to come out. So this, uh, this do does seem to me like a pretty generous feeding. Makes me wonder if this might actually end up being the last feeding that this bin receives. Because besides this, we've also got the coffee, right? It's already starting to develop a little bit of mold on there, I see. There's also stuff that the worms will appreciate, I'm sure. Pretty interesting how the coffee resembles the finished castings but you could definitely tell there's a difference when you look at it up close start bringing things back into the middle over here but I want to uh, I want to inspect the outer edges as well I'd like to see how things look out on the sides this bin does look like it's got a pretty good sized population maybe more than the 1200 that I thought it had I think that's the estimate that I've got for the, uh, these two new, uh, older bins that we're feeding here. The last one that we fed as well as this one, I think. I think the estimate is 1,200 population in each one, although I've got a question mark in my tracking spreadsheet alongside that number because I am, you know, skeptical of whether or not that's even accurate. But I'm gonna uh, take a peek on the outer edges of this bin too to see how things look. Material crumbles quite nicely but it definitely feels pretty damp. It too has um, traces of leaves in it here and there. Not bad. Yeah, I'm wondering if it is time to maybe um, send this bin down the path of foraging and treat this as its last feeding, maybe. Yeah, look at that, a lot of worms out here too. I don't know, I'll have to give it some thought, but I'll definitely keep it in my mind as a consideration for this bin that this might actually be its last feeding. I know there's plenty of space that I could continue going in this bin. I just don't like getting too high up to the, uh, the top edge of the bin. I like to try to keep it um, low enough that I've got room to move stuff back and forth without getting too close to the edge. and potentially spilling it out the sides okay you know I thought today was gonna be a quickie and then I kind of had this brainstorm about steaming the food for the worms and then and then a little mishap in the kitchen with the overheating and burning of the juices and charring of the pot <laughs> still got a little bit of cleanup I've got to take care of up in the kitchen to make up for the mess that I made up there. So that's some more fun. It's gonna go hand in hand with cleaning up after myself here today. I think for good measure, we're gonna give them a feeding zone indicator. How do you like that? <laughs> and like I said earlier, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply cover up with a piece of paper only. We're gonna give this bin a chance to start airing out a little bit, drying off. See little mites cruising around here all, all over the place too. Maybe by drying off a little bit, we'll also start to see fewer mites hanging out in here as well. I wonder if I can maybe get some of this material off my glove. 
seems like a shame to wash it down the sink if I can just keep it in the bin, right? So obviously I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do here. And I'll put everything away, but that's boring. I'm not going to waste your time with that. Uh, before I go, let me really quickly say thank you. Thanks for watching. That's it for the video today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.